G'day folks, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews, back with another video. And today we're doing a headphone review on the T7R and the T7RX by Langsdom. So without further ado, hit the like button and the subscribe button, and let's get stuck into the video. Let's go. Now before we get started, a big shout out to Langsdom for sending out these headphones for review. Really appreciate it guys. Going to try and do you some justice. Now, if you think a product that gets sent to me is going to get all thumbs up, then you're sorely mistaken. I will still do an honest review whether I paid for the product or not. Now, the T7RX and the T7R are very similar in design and functionality. T7RX is touch control, T7R is button control. Some of the specs we're going to go through and have a look. They're pretty much the same specs for both of them, except for a couple of minor changes. Now, 10 meters line of sight for Bluetooth. I found that to be true during my testing, up to 80 hours of standby time. Now, look, I've got to be honest with you, I've used these for about two weeks and the standby time has been fine. I mean, I use them for a few days, then I charge the case. I don't need to let them run down to zero, uh, but I think that that would probably stand true about 80 hours of standby. It takes about one and a half hours to charge the case and you get about four charges per case. That is the same for both products. You might be thinking these look a little bit familiar, a little bit more like the apples of the world or the AirPods and you'd be true in that. They definitely look like AirPods, especially at first glance. These are both pumping out Bluetooth 5.0, which is great. And the frequencies we're running at is about 20 hertz to about 20 kilohertz, so quite a wide frequency range there. Here are the cases that they come in, and as you can see, there's no real telling which one is which until you open them up. Once you open them up, then you'll clearly be able to see that the T7RX is touch control and the T7R is button control. Now for the button on the T7Rs, it does take a little bit of a push to register the push on the button, but you definitely press it once and it pauses the song, double click and it skips forward the song. Press the button to answer, press the button to end the call. So it's pretty straightforward on how to use these. I don't think there'll be any confusion. With the T7RX, it's one tap to pause a song or to answer a call and a double tap to skip forward a song or a tap to end a call. So again, pretty basic functionality, which is what you want. You don't want to be running down the street or working out, trying to figure out how your headphones work. So these work reasonably well with that touch control, and I didn't have too many problems with that touch control at all. For everyday use, I found them to be pretty comfortable and pretty easy on the ears. Now I did notice that once you get up to about 70% volume for these, it starts to become too loud. You wanna keep that volume down pretty low just to protect your ears. Long-term use of headphones can do a fair bit of damage. So these are pretty loud. You don't need to turn them really up past 70, 75%. Now the music is easy listening, and by that I mean the bass is there, the mids are there, and the highs are there. They're not a thousand dollar pair of headphones, they are a $40 pair of headphones, and this is the sort of sound I would expect from a $40 to $50 pair of headphones. For me, I do use Google Play Music, and within that I use their basic equalizer settings, so I can change how it sounds to my ears through the app, and the headphones adapted with that just fine. I didn't have any real problems. And it's the same for the T7Rs. I mean, I didn't really have any problems whatsoever with the T7Rs for sound either. I should just back it up a bit and just let you know how easy it is to pair these. To pair them, you simply open the case, go to your Bluetooth settings, scan for the product, tap on it, hey presto, it connects. Once you put them back in the case, they do disconnect, so no problems there. And the T7Rs, that's exactly the same process for connecting them or pairing them to your phone. Now, when I was flipping between the two, testing them out, as soon as I closed one and opened the other, one would disconnect, the other one would connect, and I had no issues with connectivity. Also, when I was testing the distance, I was getting about 10 to 12 meters away from my phone before I started to get some cutouts. They look good, they're small, they're lightweight, they're reasonably comfortable they sound okay, they're cheap. So where have they gone wrong, you might ask? Well, for me, I'm a pretty active sort of dude. Like this morning, I ran 15 kilometers. I need something that's gonna stay in my ears 
for 15 kilometers. I do circuit training, I do cycling, I do all sorts of activity. I need headphones that are gonna stay in my ears. Unfortunately, the T7R and the T7RX didn't stay in my ears while I was running or doing vigorous exercise. Now, on-road cycling, yes, they stayed in. Walking, yes, they stayed in. But doing circuit training where I might be skipping or doing jumping jacks or that sort of thing, they started to work their way out. And running, they had no hope of staying in. I actually ran for 500 meters and they had worked their way out four times. I will be using these around the house, but I won't be using them for running or any vigorous activity because they just work their way out. So I think they need to find a way around that. That is a problem, especially if you like running. That would be my only real gripe that I had with these. You can see a light that comes on just under the lid there when they're on and connected to your device and that's a nice little indicator. They don't feel cheap at all. I would say the only time that they feel cheap is with the lid. Just feels a little bit plasticky, a little bit cheap, which is a bit disappointing because everything else doesn't feel cheap. They actually feel really nice and solid. They've got a nice battery in there, holds a fair amount of charge, but that lid just feels like it would break off a bit too easily. But they haven't broken off, so it's just a fear. Let's just say that, it's just a fear. T7R and T7RX by Langsdom. Would I rate them? Yeah, I'll give them a pass, they're not too bad. I definitely think there's a little bit of improvement to go, especially with the fit and probably that sound. I mean, they could adjust it and tune that sound a little bit better so you don't get your ears blasted off above 75%. Tell me in the comments down below, what did you think of my coverage of the T7R and T7RX by Langston? Hope you appreciate my honest review. Hit the like button and the subscribe button because I'll be back with more videos very soon. I appreciate all your support and I'll catch you in the next video. Check out.